Hello and welcome to Veterans Metals Workshop. I'm really glad you're with us today and you've already picked up on the clue. We're going to talk about parachute badges. We're going to take a look at all of the United States military parachute badges. And if you stay with me to the end, you'll see three that you've never seen before. Then we'll take a look at the parachute badges of our allies, Great Britain, France, Germany, uh, Italy, and uh, some pretty unique specimens there, especially among the French. And by the way, we'll go back and look at the German World War II Paul Schirmager badges for the Luftwaffe and the Wehrmacht, and then the 1957 denazified badge. Of course, they are all different now, but you'll see that. We'll take a look at them from the Far East, some unique parachute badges from Africa. You're gonna love them, and a number of others. Plus, I absolutely guarantee you, we'll take a look at all the South Vietnamese parachute badges. So, I think you'll have a good show here. And by the way, if you enjoy these, please give us a like. Even more important, please subscribe. It'll keep us on the air. So enough talk. Let's go look at the parachute badges of the world. Being very polite, we'll start with our allies first. And the first among equals, of course, is the United Kingdom. And the British parachute badge is shown in your lower left in cloth. And then above it in gold is what's referred to as the tropical dress. There's also a senior version of that in silver. On the bottom right hand side are the Australian cloth parachute wings of the Australian Army. And above that, the gold wings are, well, they're from the Australian Special Air Service. And let's compare some other European parachute wings with the British wings. On your left are Romanian parachute wings. They seem to be copied much after the French. And at the very bottom, it looks like the NATO insignia. There's actually 80 years of history for Romanian paratroopers. So there are many different versions of Romanian parachute badges out there. In the center is the Spanish Army Parachute Badge, which is unique and probably goes all the way back to, well, the period of Generissimo Francisco Franco. And those are compared over on your right to the British Parachute Wings, which we just took a look at. American soldiers who qualify for foreign parachute badges after going through the training and jump training will wear it on the right-hand side of their uniform as shown on this uniform of a Special Forces NCO. You can see the British parachute badge over on the right side over his unit awards. Taking a look at the French military parachute wings, they were first created in 1946 and they were awarded for six jumps, three daylight standard jumps, one daylight jump with a reserve parachute, one night jump without equipment, and one night jump with full gear and equipment. The badge in the center is called the Parachute Monitor Badge, but it's basically a senior non-commissioned officer who's the jump master or the trainer. And on the far right is the Operational Freefall Badge. On the bottom row, you can see different examples of manufacturers, in some cases with serial numbers on them, and different ways of mounting or wearing the badge. And on the far right, you can see a cloth version of the operational freefall badge. And I thought you might enjoy taking a look at some of the unique and specialized French paratrooper unit insignias. They are, well, they're just beautifully designed with a lot of symbolism in them. And the 2nd Parachute Regiment of the French Foreign Legion has a particularly nice medallion, which it gives as a presentation piece. And yes, of course, the French Air Force has its own version of a parachute insignia, and it's shown to the right of a standard parachute badge. You can see the first one with wings, and then the senior parachutist with a star above the parachute. So let's look at our neighbor to the north, Canada. Back in 1942 or World War II, Canada had its own set of distinctive wings. But in 1968, they changed to, to the design that you see here with the red maple leaf. Now, there is a different set of wings for those paratroopers in the Canadian Army that have qualified with enough jumps or time in service, and that is a white maple leaf, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But for, well, for American soldiers, you would only have the red maple leaf wings authorized for wear. Canadian paratroopers assigned to airborne units are entitled to wear the white leaf jump wings. Foreign service members and all other graduates who complete the Canadian basic parachute course will receive the red leaf jump wings that you saw earlier. 
Shown on your left are the metal versions of the Australian Army parachute wings, and I showed you the cloth version of those a little earlier. And in the center are the Italian parachute wings, and this is a basic Italian parachute badge. If Jumpmasters wear the basic badge with a red cloth background, and after 30 years of jump status, you would get a set of gold Italian parachute wings. On the far right, of the Korean parachute wings, and I will show you an older example of those in just a moment. Here's a set of Vietnam-era Korean parachute wings. The senior jumper or jump master would also have a star on top of the parachute. This is a handsome set of wings, and they're really well done. The current Japanese parachute wings are shown here, and they're a classic design with the parachute and the outspread wings, sort of like a combination of the American parachute badge and the American aviator badge. But uh, anyway, you cut it, it's a nice set of wings. One of the most distinctive parachute badges in the world is that of Thailand, which has the elephants underneath the parachute. I hope that's a big parachute, certainly larger than a T-10. Cloth examples of the Thai parachute wings are, well, they're really colorful. And when you get them in bullion, <laughs> it's something to see. A lot of Special Forces soldiers earn wings in Latin America and South America. And these El Salvadorian wings are very unique. I wish I could decipher the, all the imagery at the top of the wings, but it looks like at the very top of the triangle is a small cross. The Chilean Army parachute badge is really unique, and it makes me wonder if the wings on either side of the parachute are from a great condor. Both members of the 82nd Airborne Division have earned these wings, and uh, what makes it really interesting is that all the jump commands are given in Spanish, and the Americans sound off in English. Ha <laughs> ha! I believe the most unique, distinctive, and oldest of all parachute badges is a Polish parachute badge, originally designed in 1919 as a military pilot's badge. In World War II, it was adopted for the first independent Polish parachute brigade, and today it is used by all branches of the Polish Army as the official parachute badge. The parachute badge of the Bundeswehr in the Federal Republic of Germany is awarded in bronze after the completion of the basic course in five parachute jumps. It becomes silver after 20 jumps and is awarded in gold after 50 jumps. The badge features a stylized parachute surrounded by a reef of oak leaves which are flanked on the left and right side by stylized wings. During World War II, the first German paratroopers belonged to the Luftwaffe, and their parachute badge is shown on the left, a diving eagle holding a swastika with a laurel and oak leaf surrounding. The Wehrmacht formed its own parachute forces, and it had a badge that was similar, but it had the eagle and the swastika at the top of a reef. The badge was denazified in 1957 and awarded to Fallschirmjägers in the Bundeswehr, but it was soon replaced by the bronze, silver, and gold version shown just a little earlier. The Lithuanian parachute badge shown here is unique in that it comes in five different classes. The basic class of the first awarded one is called fifth class, the example you see here. Then after that, fourth class adds one star over the canopy, way up to first class, which has five six-pointed silver stars arched over the parachute canopy. You can well imagine Saudi Arabia does not have a lot of paratroopers, but they do have four parachute badges. And the basic parachute badge would be what you see here, except with no stars over it. And then the next class would be one star, and as you see here, two stars and three stars on the top. Sometimes the center logo, if it has the palm tree and cross swords, would have a green well, backing. Well, here are four unique African parachute badges. The top two are from Zaire, and they are patterned after the basic French badges. The one in the upper left, though, of course, has a handsome leopard head at the very bottom. And then the jump master or monitor, patterned after the French version, is in gold and has also a leopard head. 
pursuit badges from Gabon are on the bottom level, and they have a unique design. I really like the lightning bolt in the talons. And on the right, the badge for the jump master or monitor in the French style is shown with a different set of wings. Quick commercial. If you enjoy these shows, please give us a like and even better subscribe. It'll keep us on the air. Okay, back to the airborne show. Here's some unique parachute badges you won't see very often. In the upper right is a Hungarian parachute badge when Hungary was under the communist control. And in the bottom are two United Nations parachute badges issued to the Russian Parachute Battalion serving in the United Nations Command in, I think, the Kosovo area. The pin in the upper left is the old Soviet Union parachute insignia or pin that was worn by the airborne troops. Here we'll step back 50 years in time and look at the parachute badges of the South Vietnamese Armed Forces. Starting in the upper left-hand corner is the South Vietnamese Army Parachute Badge. And the two versions to the right are, well, they're kind of knockoff versions that you'll occasionally see out there. But the correct version is the one in the left-hand corner. The, just below it are the three examples of the South Vietnamese Special Forces Airborne Badges. And just like the Army Badge, they came in three variations. They came with no attachment, which is the one on the lower left corner. Then with a gold star for the senior rating, as shown in the center. And then on the far right, a gold palm leaf for master parachutist. The upper left corner is a cloth version of the Vietnamese Army Parachute Badge. You can see both the front and the back. And then below that, a senior parachute badge is made for the American forces to wear. And underneath that, an example of the basic parachute badge made for wear on the American combat uniform. Vietnamese airborne units also wore this insignia on their lower left pocket when on active airborne duty. Shown in the upper left is the Vietnamese Airborne Division unit patch along with some other unit patches. They were very colorful and the Vietnamese Airborne was an elite unit with a lot of pride. Members of the Vietnamese Airborne Division also wore red beret with a embroidered insignia with the parachute and the wings as shown here. And that brings us to American parachute badges, and we'll take a look at the Army parachute badge. It goes back to World War II. It comes in basic, senior, and master, as shown here, along with, well, subdued versions down below. The parachutist badge is a silver badge about one and a half inches wide and consists of an open parachute on and over a pair of stylized wings. The basic award is given for completing jump school at Fort Benning or one combat jump while a senior parachutist has to complete a minimum of 30 jumps to include 15 jumps with combat equipment and a couple of night jumps, and a master parachutist has to have 65 jumps to include 25 with combat equipment, four night jumps, and one as a jump master of a stick. U.S. paratroopers receive a bronze star on their parachute badge for every combat jump. And here I'm using the example of a master parachutist. But one combat jump would have one bronze star as shown. Then if you had two combat jumps, two bronze stars as shown. Three, four, all the way up to five in which the single bronze star would be substituted with a gold star. Personally, I think they should give him a solid gold parachute badge. Unique badge is awarded to parachute riggers because not only do they pack all the parachutes and examine all of the parachutes, but they also prepare all of the heavy drops. Oh yes, they jump with their units. Well, not a parachute badge. The Pathfinder's badge is so unique and so tied to paratroopers that I needed to show it. Basically, the Pathfinders are the first guys out of the airplane that set up the drop zone. So they've all gone through extensive parachute training. The Airborne Pathfinder badge is awarded for successful completion of the Pathfinder's course. And in this particular case, you see the example of this non-commissioned officer wearing both the Master Parachutist badge, Ranger badge, and the Pathfinder badge below his ribbons. The Military Freefall Parachute Badge is an oxidized silver badge consisting of a freefall parachute superimposed upon a pair of stylized wings 
displaying the fighting knife of the 1st Special Service Force, a World War II outfit. It is issued in two versions, the basic military freefall wings and the jumpmaster military freefall wings. The Navy and the Marine Corps use the basic parachute insignia of the United States Army, and it's awarded to Marine and Navy officers and enlisted personnel who successfully completed the Army Airborne School at Fort Benning, Georgia. Once the Navy or Marine personnel has completed five additional jumps that include at least one combat equipment day jump and two combat equipment night jumps, uh, and from two or more different types of aircraft, they are awarded the Navy and Marine Corps parachutist insignia, which is a bronze gold-plated metal pin consisting of the basic aviation wings with a gold-colored open parachute centered on the wings. Here are examples of the Navy and Marine Corps parachute insignia being worn with full-size medals and with ribbons. And for staying with me to the very end, I will show you the most unique parachute badge that the Air Force has ever produced. In 1955, the Air Force decided it needed its own distinctive parachute insignia. The final design, as shown here, was in the style of the medical badges that the Air Force uses today. And the new badge was adopted by the Air Force in 1956. And the first master parachutist badge was pinned on Chief Warrant Officer Lambert by the Secretary of the Air Force in a Pentagon ceremony. The first badges produced in 1956 were thick, slightly concave, and usually sterling silver, and they had nine suspension lines underneath the canopy. When the supply of these badges was depleted in 1957, a new sterling silver badge was designed as a thinner, flatter badge with only seven suspension lines beneath the canopy. The badges were never authorized to be made in cloth for wear on fatigue uniforms, nor were they ever authorized in bullion for wear on the mess dress uniform. In 1963, the Air Force discontinued its unique and now hard-to-find parachute insignia and returned to using the United States Army Basic Parachute Badge, Senior Parachute Badge, and Master Parachute Badge. I did want to mention two other unique United States Air Force badges that are connected to parachute badges, one of which is the Combat Control Badge, as shown on the lower left, and the other is the Pararescue Badge, as shown on the lower right. Parachute badge, I feel like it would be wrong not to mention the Glider Badge from World War II. The Glider Badge is a silver badge with a glider frontal view superimposed upon a pair of stylized wings displayed in curving upward. It is now an obsolete badge, but it was issued to glider troops in World War II. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today for our unique show on the parachute badges of around the world. Uh, I don't believe you've ever seen those three Air Force parachute badges before, and I think the French ones were pretty interesting as well as the German ones now and the German ones in World War II. And those two unique parachute badges out of Africa with the leopards on them, I really like those. And uh, if you enjoyed this, please give us a like. Even better, subscribe. It'll keep us on the air. See you next time on Veterans Medals Workshop. Thank you.